Hey, it's Jaxter, and I sure am glad to be out of that padded cell, back sitting on my comfy couch. Welcome to another movie review on my channel. Today I am going to be reviewing a rare 90s animated movie called Cats Don't Dance 1997. Honestly, I've been wanting to watch this for months now, but it is such a rare movie that it was a hassle. But last Friday I could finally find it. And I will admit, I was pretty excited for it. I've heard that it is one of the most underrated animated movies of the 90s, and it actually became the first non-Disney animated movie to win an any award for best animated feature, so it has to be good, right? Well, let's see. The Storyline The movie's plot goes as follows, a young ambitious cat named Danny comes to Hollywood with a song in his heart, dancing moves in his feet, and the dream of becoming a movie star. Unfortunately, when he gets there, he learns that the only part he can get are the stereotypical cat roles in which his only line would be meow. So, he sets out to change that situation with the aid of some new friends, including Tilly Hippo, Cranston Goat, Sawyer Cat, who would later become his girl, Francis, T.W. Turtle, Woolly Mammoth and Fudge the Penguin. However, Hollywood child star Darla Dimple, who very much parodies Shirley Temple, is also out to ensure that Danny and the others don't get the chance and try to get them out of film business. While yes, this story is relatively easy to understand and follow, the only reason it feels that way is because it doesn't really feel like it is offering much. It doesn't really want to blow our minds or anything and would just stick to playing safe. Adding in that fact, it makes the movie rather predictable, you'll probably know what will happen at the end. Danny's goal will be achieved eventually, he will overcome every problem he faces. Also, the movie can rely on a few cliches. They aren't that offensively bad, but they can be a bit frustrating to me. For instance, one cliche I saw in the movie has to do with Sawyer. Sawyer doesn't like Danny at first during the beginning of the movie, but then grows into him and becomes the love interest of him. Which, trust me, has been done in plenty of movies already. And with a rather short running time of 74 minutes, the movie felt extremely rushed, and when it ended, it felt like only an hour, even though it's under 70 minutes without credits. Plus, some plot elements feel forced. However, that is where the negatives for the story end, as while yes, it's predictable and can rely on a few cliches, the execution of it is done reasonably well. The late 1930s setting of the feature also adds in some atmosphere to the movie. Adding in the fact that it is a musical, when songs play, it can really get, as Darla says in the movie, making loud. It also incorporates a nice message of believing in yourself and always being determined even during bad situations. With all that taken into account, the story itself is subpar. Although the execution and message is good, it could have offered more and would have done with a longer running time. I'm going to give the story a 6 out of 10. The Animation the animation for this movie has really gotten a lot of praise for its energetic movements and vibrant colors mixed in with some pretty high quality character animation. For me, I would disagree. Although yes on paper, the animation is very good, but for me, I just don't think it fully works. I'm one of those people who do not like over exaggerated zany animation, and this movie uses this kind of animation most of the time, and it can really get irritating. When the characters move super quickly, there's a slight feel of laziness and such an extremely desperate need to be funny with the cartoony movements. I know it's meant to emulate the Warner Brothers style used in their cartoons, but could they not use it so much up to the point that it becomes desperate? This isn't my only negative with the animation though. Although yes, the character designs for the animals are well done and are colorful, some of the human characters like LB Mammoth and Flanagan don't look very appealing. And in some places, the movie can show its age with some of the animation elements it uses. If you have a sharp eye, you can see a couple of lip sync errors, even if it is mostly good, but one frame that I just found to be extremely unforgiving was during the song Nothing's Gonna Stop Us Now. Right before the first time Danny and Sawyer mention the song name, they move close together and for one frame, one of Sawyer's arms is completely disconnected. It's hard to spot, but it's there. This was most likely done for the cartoony character animation, but like I said, I do not like how it plays out. Back to the topic of showing its age, the movie does use some elements of computer animation which look very dated to today's standards. Also, there would be a few times where the 2D characters wouldn't blend in that great with the CGI animated parts of the movie. You can't blame it though, 
as its budget wasn't Disney-sized and it is a movie that's over 20 years old. It's a shame that the movie had to waste the potential it had with its material, because when the animation doesn't want to go all zany, it looks really nice and almost right up there with Disney. Okay, I'll admit, maybe I went too hard on the animation. But I can't help the fact that I'm not a person who is a fan of cartoony and zany-like animation. I know why they did it, but they really should at least tone it down a little so it isn't so desperate looking. I'm going to have to give the animation a 5 out of 10. The characters. I think I am being quite harsh on this movie. I still have a few more to go through here as well, but I guess a reasonable amount of the characters here are likable enough. Danny, the main character is an orange cat, who dreams of being a Hollywood movie star. I will admit, I did cringe when he upstaged Darla Dimple during the song Little Boat on the Sea, but apart from that, he's likable and not willing to give up. Sawyer is a white cat, and eventually Danny's love interest. Yes, the romance is forced and cliché, but I find her quite funny because of her attitude, and her singing voice is really good, thanks to a great vocal performance from Natalie Cole. Too bad she's dead. Darla Dimple is the villain of the movie. She is a female child star that heavily parodies Shirley Temple. I find her a great villain, even if I kind of find her voice a little annoying when she's mad. Tilly is a hippo and is one of Danny's friends. You may disagree, but gosh I sometimes can't stand her. She is extremely annoying the way she talks super quick. You'd hardly understand what she'd sometimes say when she speaks super quick. Wooly Mammoth is the mascot of Mammoth Pictures, who appears in the logo but can show a really large talent for piano playing. He just have some talent, he gives out some useful advice sometimes and overall I'd say I like him. LB Mammoth and Flanagan, Mammoth being the founder of Mammoth Pictures and Flanagan a director. I don't find their designs appealing, and sometimes they can speak too quickly like Tilly, but I guess I can tolerate them a little. As for the others like Francis, Cramston, Pudge, TW and Max the Butler, well, Pudge seems very lovable. But Cranston can be a hateable jerk to Danny for most of the movie. I don't really find Francis or T.W. that interesting. And, seriously, Max the Buckler is absolutely massive. And his cartoony movements feel so forced. The way he moves his mouth as well is just, weird. And some other minor characters in the movie are more just background extras that don't serve much of a purpose. Also, due to the movie's desperate need to be funny with its cartoony and energetic movements, it gives very little time to develop the characters and reveal why they love doing what they do. The characters are a bit of a mixed bag. While the likeable ones are worth remembering, the ones that I do not like, I seriously would want to forget about. And I feel like they could have been developed more. I'm going to give the characters a 6 out of 10. The Musical Numbers the good news is, I have no more negatives to talk about for this movie anymore. And in my opinion, the element that stands out the most in this movie are definitely the musical numbers. The songs were composed by Randy Newman, who also wrote the lyrics. And he did an amazing job. The musical numbers in the movie include Our Time Has Come, Danny's Arrival Song, Little Boat on the Sea, Animal Jam Session, Baking Loud, Tell Me Lies and Nothing's Gonna Stop Us Now. What makes them stand out from each other is, they all have their own different beats and tunes, and not all of them sound like they came from the 1930s, which ups the atmosphere. The best thing about them though, is that they are all amazing. Great vocal performances, great composing, well thought out lyrics, this movie has it all. I can't really say much more about them, they're just that good, and I haven't got a thing to complain about for them. So I can give the musical numbers an easy 10 out of 10. If I'm being brutally honest, I don't think Cats Don't Dance is that good of a movie. Disagree with me all you want, but I wouldn't call it an underrated gem like most people do nowadays. It could have been something really grand, but it instead decides to be an over-the-top insane mess with its extremely over-exaggerated and actually aging animation, along with its subpar story filled with forced romance and cliches and not much to offer, along with characters that, for some, I just want to forget. It's not a bad movie though, since when it doesn't want to be zany, the animation is quite good, and the songs are truly wonderful. It's just too bad that all that potential was wasted on becoming a rushed cartoon rather than a grand musical. 
As for recommendations, well, if you're interested in this movie, I think you'll have a nice time. If not, then I suggest you just skip it. Cats Don't Dance has earned a total of 27 points out of a possible 40, which translates to an overall score of 6.5 out of 10. I might have been harsh on this movie, but I still hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like down below. And if not, I completely understand. I was quite harsh on this movie. But before I go, I want to introduce a format for my reviews. I have decided that to spice things up a little, I am going to spin a wheel with a list of possible things to review on my channel, 50 can be on the wheel at once, and the one that gets picked will be what I review next, and another one will replace that chosen one so the wheel doesn't run out of things to review. ClassDeals.net made this wheel, and I thank them for that cool thing. You can see the wheel right here on the screen. It is 50 things on the wheel I can review on my channel, so I'm going to spin it now. The next review shall be... Finding Dory. The sequel to Finding Nemo. So yeah, I will be reviewing Finding Dory next. I know, before, I said I'd review Detective Javier next, but I just wanted to spice things up for my reviews. I'm sorry about this. But who knows. I could get that next on the wheel. Anyways, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye. Subscribe by clicking on my profile picture that has a yellow background, and subscribe to my good friend, the BG channel, right above my picture. Also check out some of my videos, including my unusual news reports and more. Thank you.